A pleasant good afternoon to you and welcome on into the SFBN's production of Girls Flag Football. Beautiful day here in Yaden, PA at the nicely renovated Rap Curry Athletic Complex. And we got Penwood Patriots taking on the Coatesville Raiders. Now we got two 24 minute halves here. We play running clock up until the final two minutes of each half. And then it's just about standard football rules as we are set here in Yaden. Penwood will start with the ball, a running play. They're in the Navy going left to right. No successful grab of the flag. And then finally brought down, I believe that's Fatma Kamara. And not, admittedly, not the best view here of the numbers, so apologies if some mispronunciations or miss numbers here. But nonetheless, should be a fun day. Uh, inaugural season, if I'm not mistaken, here of flag football. Gives the ladies an opportunity to show their skills. I've heard very good things, some great talent from the Patriots here. We got a passing play, wide open, a little curl action as falling to the ground here around the 45 yard line. Can't make out, I should have brought my binoculars today. I tell you what, that's on me. Never come to a flag football game without your binoculars, that's rule one. It looks like Amira Thomas is quarterbacking the offense here for the Penwood Patriots. Josh Saffron on the call with Sean Kelly producing. Seven players aside, one snap. And another handoff, a draw play. Oh, what a tackle. It's gonna be Bella DiMatteo. Stuff that run, plug in the gap. So we got our un unofficially official clock here on the screen. As we tick under a minute and a half. Gone so far, familiarizing myself with some of the nuances and different rules here in the flag football circuit. Something that I, I think is extremely interesting. I don't think Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni would like this rule too much. But once you get within the five yards of the goal line, you cannot run the ball. We're going deep, tossed up off the hands. Was a great throw from Amira Thomas. I believe she was looking for Taylor Mims. Wonder if any relation to Denzel Mims, the way she was going up. So I believe we have fourth down here. I believe we have fourth down and five. Don't quote me on that one. Five yards to go to get to the 50 yard line, which I believe would reset the chains here. It's funny, I say the 50 yard line, since the goal line's at the 10, it's really like the 40 yard line, just cut the field in half. Nonetheless, big play here, might be a designed run. And actually, hold everything, we had a punt there. Everything was thrown off. Punt fielded by Bella Di Matteo. she's already been everywhere and wrapped up right around the 43 yard line. So we got a change of possession and the Raiders will take the field. Talk to Coach Crisp for the game today. Great squad they got over there with the Raiders, still looking for their first win of the season, 0-2-1. And it looks like Alicia Woodward will be quarterbacking the offense for Coatesville. Nice two-step drop, quick screen play to Kayla Mache, but tackled almost immediately behind the line. Angel Davies with the big tackle. So second down here. Been told to keep my eyes out for a lot of trickery here, some creativity in the offense. There's no blocking. Looks like a full offensive line here from the Raiders. Woodward, screen pass once again, outside, tackled. I think it was Kylie Mann on the reception. So third down now. I keep looking down at the field for a uh, marker that has a two or a three or something on it. 
who will go with third down here. Big stop upcoming. Woodward awaits. Woodward barking out signals. The motion woman is Kayla Mesh. She gets it, reverses field, but she's brought down behind the line. A lot of motion, but not a lot of forward motion. And like I said, I don't quote me on it, but I want to give credit to that tackle. I want to say it was Angel Davies getting behind the line of scrimmage. Going for it here on fourth. Handoff, it's man, man. Open room brought down, but she got the first down. Gutsy play call by the Coatesville staff over there, but they knew the line to gain. Handed it off on fourth down, and man charged forward to get the first. So the length of the field pretty much to go, not the length of the field, the length of from midfield forward to go now to get the first points on the board for either side. It's Woodward, two-step drop, and no flag down. Woo, barreling through. Watch out, that's Bella Di Matteo. So second down. I believe that's my guy Brandon Fortune over there on the mic. Brandon, of course. Braylon. My apologies to Braylon Fortune. Woodward going near side. Love the effort there from Kayla Mesh. But couldn't come up with it. And now third down. So Coatesville, strategy so far, keep the throws close to the line of scrimmage and then get some run after catch. Going deep this time. Nice defensive play. And it looks like the intended receiver had the defender beat. But a last grasp of the hand got up there and stopped what would have been a short touchdown. The fist is up, fourth down, got to go, whew, take a look at that. About 29 yards here. Prevent defense for the Patriots. Woodward, it's up, and batted down nicely. A couple defensive plays. Give credit to Coatesville, the receivers got down there. Not a bad toss by Alicia Woodward. But Pemwa was ready. So a little over 16 and a half to play. And Pemwood takes over on downs in an opportune spot. He got a couple plays here now to get across that first down line, which would be the 50 yard line. Unofficially, I'm totally assuming that to be honest. But I think that's an educated guess, as they say, from what I've seen so far. And we got a flag here. What happened? Not sure if that was incomplete or not, to be honest. Second down, so a miscommunication. Everyone was off guard there. Drag play, runs into the defender. Nothing doing there for the Patriots. It was Janae Jackson Cofield on the reception. That'll set up third down now. Staring down that marker, six yards away. Patriots not afraid to find some gaps in, not sure honestly if Coatesville's been running a zone or a man. It looked like a zone earlier based on some of the passes that Penwood were able to thread through. Thomas gets the snap right at that line, and it's batted free. Nice defense. I think it was Ariana Tools. Got a hand in there and broke that free. So fourth down now for the Patriots. You can live with that if you're Penwood. Still, like I said, just seven yards to go. Right idea, right play. Good awareness to know where that marker is. It'll be Rose Civil to snap. Thomas has it. 
Fires short of the marker to gain, and it's Kayla Mache stepping up and preventing the first down. Another turnover on downs. So neither team able to generate a ton of offense so far. But you got to tip your cap. There hasn't been a lot of open turf to run. Great facility here at Penwood, newly renovated. You got track practice going on. You got baseball practice to the right. Screen pass there, not going anywhere. Bend, don't break defense from both sides. They'll let you run that West Coast the offense all day, as long as you're not going deep and going behind the secondary. Second down, and reminder, Coatesville now has to score a touchdown and three downs here. No first down for the Raiders. Going deep. They got it. All the way down to the six-yard line. Pass complete to Bella Di Matteo. She has been everywhere on the field today. Defense, offense. Excellent game for number four out there in the black and red. So where this ball is spotted is very key. It looks like actually beneficial for Coatesville. So they're six yards out. Third down, they can run it if they want. It is a handoff. Trying to find the edge. What's the signal? A touchdown indeed. It's Kylie Mann taking the outside zone handoff and scoring six. So as I was saying before the handoff, had Bella Di Matteo been tackled with five yards at that five yard line, that play would have been illegal, but had she been brought down at the six, or excuse me, having being brought down at the six, they were able to run that run. Let's see, point after now. Woodward trying to go above the defense, and no one's home. So it'll stay at six nothing here. We got our first points on the board. It's a Kylie Mann rushing touchdown. So Penwood with their work cut out for them now. Down six nothing. They've shown some bursts in the past. They'll start here right around, let's see, that'll be the 24 yard line on the field, but considering the end zone starts at the 10, it's really the 14 yard line on the flag football field. We'll see if they can get the run game going, nothing doing. They had a couple successful passes on that first drive. Thomas takes the safe route, I like it. Open room, and no, oh my bad. Kayla Mesh, another tackle. Give her three on the day. And two of them coming from behind the line of scrimmage. That one not being one, that's just a, uh, looks like a two yard game for Penwood. Kind of an extension of the run, as I would hear said in the press conference. Broken tackle. And we got a whistle. I think her, her flag might have fallen off. I don't know. We got a first down nonetheless. So first down Patriots. Fresh set of downs, never a bad thing. How they got there, who's to say? And we got a fumble. Maybe just a stoppage of the clock here. Not a stoppage of the clock or stoppage of play at least. Looked like a fumble to me. I do wonder if maybe Fumbling isn't really part of the rules considering there's no tackling. They don't want to encourage a peanut Tillman out here on the girls field. So I'm gonna assume a dead ball, pick it up at the spot. Blitz coming, tipped around, no one's home. And the defense continues. Looks like third down here, gotta get to the 50 in two plays or you're punting. 
Not a bad punt earlier from Penwood, especially good special teams coverage. So Amira Thomas gets her signals. Huddle breaks. It'll be Rose Civil to snap. Blitz is coming, Thomas gets rid of it. It's Jackson Cofield. She has her flag brought down right at the 45. Nice quick swing pass from Amira Thomas. And the Patriots get some positivity with a fourth down looming. Let's see what they do with it here. They punted last time in just about the same exact situation. Fourth and six. How aggressive does Coatesville want to get? They back off pressure. Thomas down the middle. It's tipped incomplete. Nice play over the middle. That was Gabby Bookard. So Bookard forces a turnover on downs. And Coatesville will look to make this a two-possession game. Under 10 minutes to go now. A little over eight, actually. Oh, man, that running clock sneaks up on you. I tell you what. Reminder, once you hit two minutes, we get a two-minute warning. And rules are more like conventional football. You stop the clock for incompletions, out of bounds, penalties, the whole nine. Hand off here. Oh, man, taking a punishing blow. It was a good run from Adriana Figueroa. Fearless. I'm not sure you can really lower your shoulder and flag football, but Figueroa did pretty close to that. Downhill running. We got four players back here in the shotgun. All right, now motion over. Figueroa goes into the slot. So two back with Woodward. Woodward fakes it, looking deep. Tries to find a short route and does. Nice tackle. Passes to Dean Mateo. And it was Rose Civil who made the tackle in traffic. Big tackle. Looked like Bella Di Mateo was home free. Suddenly you don't really think about it until you're watching it. Usually when you're watching football, you see three bodies around one player, you know they're gonna go down, but in flag football, less room to use your hands and grab that flag could be dangerous. Third down, handoff again, trying to find the outside, no dice. Great tackle behind the line that time by Anila Johnson. Anila, thank you to someone yelling in the crowd. Anila Johnson. My apologies, Anila. Fourth down and a ton. Fourth down and 24 to be exact. Tight formation here. Woodward's gonna have to go deep. She does, she's got a, a excuse me, a receiver, but a nice tackle. Assuming that's not a first down, tackle was made by Samaya Knight. And it looks like that is a first down. My apologies. So I'm still trying to figure this out myself. I think what I can deduce is it's every 20 yard chunk would be a first down. We'll check back on that as we learn more throughout the game. Woodward checks her play sheet. First and goal, still can run the ball if you so please. They got nothing but time to work with. And a six nothing advantage, Woodward in alone, no pressure, Mesh, nice drag route, cuts it up, ooh, that's a great tackle, but no, a touchdown is called. Woodward to Mesh. So Kayla Mesh adds to her day. Had a few big tackles on the other side. I feel silly saying tackle, flag grabs. It's all the same, it counts as a tackle. Now it does it on the other end. Nice drag route drawn up by the Coatesville staff right there. Kind of a delayed play. incomplete so we got 12 nothing to score as we tick under five minutes to go here in the first nope. 
Time up? Yeah, yeah, even if you run the touchdown, it's still not a time up. Time up, sorry? Time out if they start, but it's still it's a touchdown. I mean, time up, you know, it's not like a... So Pam Wood with the ball here. Yeah, official signals to run the clock. And we're back in action here in Yaden. Hand off here. Nice burst. Try to cut it back, but not getting a lot of room there. Tackle made by Ariana Tools. Just a five yard gain that time. Right around 440 to go here in half number one. I believe I saw a first down signal there crossing that 20 yard mark. Delayed screen, nicely done. Tackled right at the 40. Not a bad little scamper. Some of these delayed plays are really paying off. That was Janae Jackson Cofield. Nice display of athleticism. So 10 yards to go for first down, second and 10. Another handoff. And nice job getting back there quickly. It was Sophie McKim. Gain of one, maybe. That's a generous one. Call it one and a half. Second down now. Ira Thomas, moving her back, left and right. Thomas gets the snap, looking deep, down the middle, interception. Coming back the other way, it's Coatesville. And down right around the 45, it looks like. Trying to make out exactly who made the play. And it looks like that was Kylie Mann. What a game for Kylie Mann. Mann with a touchdown already, now adds an INT to her total, and a nice return at that. So the teams will huddle, sudden change. 12 nothing your score here. And Coatesville looking to get their first win on the young season. Looks like 314 to play here in half number one. Scoring so far, all Coatesville, excuse me, Coatesville, Kylie Mann. The first rushing touchdown, a six yard scamper. Followed by a nice drive, Alicia Woodward found Kayla Mesh on a drag route for the second touchdown of the game. Neither point after was good. That's where we sit 12-0. Going deep. Man, was the intended receiver. Samaya Knight looks like had her hands on it. Frustrated she couldn't bring it down. So it looks like second down and 10. Alicia Woodward has it. Dump off to Mann. Mann stumbling, able to make something out of nothing. Picks up six, sets up a third and manageable. And 
and we'll get a timeout here by Coatesville. Two twenty-eight to go here in the first half. Timeout for a clock stoppage and smart use of a timeout there by Coatesville, knowing that once we hit that two-minute mark is when the running clock stops. So you want to use your timeouts probably before the two-minute mark. Then you can spike the ball, run out of bounds. All that becomes in a factor. Your pen would. You've got to start putting up points in a hurry. Still a lot of time here in the first half if you're able to get the ball back. And on the other side, if you're Coatesville, that might be an element of strategy as well. You might want to try to drain this clock here as opposed to running down and scoring. But that's more of an issue after you get this first down. Very manageable. Just a few yards to gain here. Third and four. Woodward awaits, has a snap, high snap. Another drag route to Mesh. Mesh, where are they gonna spot her? Looks like she was just short and they'll spot her so. Fourth and inches. As time ticks right around the two minute warning. Coatesville gets the snap off. We got a flag on the field. We have offsides, and it looks like offsides on Coatesville. So that's going to bring that back. No first down for the Raiders. It'll now be a fourth and five. And they'll restart the clock as we tick to a minute 45. Huge call there. A little over anxious. Might have to switch the play call here from a run to a pass. We'll see. Coach Chris and the crew dial up. High snap. They're going to stick with it on the ground. Looking for that outside edge. No dice. Great tackle behind the line. Anila Johnson with the stop. And that'll turn the ball over on downs. So that'll stop the clock with a minute 15 to go. So a minute 15 for the Patriots to put some points on the board. They got 52 yards to go to get to the goal line and 12 yards to go to get to their first first down. Incompletions will stop the clock, out of bounds stops the clock, penalties stop the clock. I'm not sure exactly how many timeouts Penwood has left. Oh, good idea. But Janae Jackson Cofield unable to hold on to that. A minute nine to go here now. Second and we'll call it 11. Some other rules to note, you can't dive while you have the ball. You can't jump while you have the ball either. Coatesville playing sticks defense. Going deep. Nobody was home. Kind of caught between two receivers. Jackson Cofield was one. And it looks like Taylor Mims was the other. Minute five to go here. Penwood not taking a lot of time left, so... If it's a turnover on downs or first down, either side is plenty of time. Still put another touchdown on the board before we head into half. Some early success passing for the Patriots. Since then, not a ton of the same. Amira Thomas waits the snap. Thomas has it. Going way deep. We had some jockeying. The officials are going to let him play. It's so tough when you throw a ball that high in the air. A lot of time to wait, a lot of time to fight for position, and the refs are going to say, hey, 
They were both fighting for it. No flags here, and that'll set up a fourth and 11. How aggressive are the Patriots going to play it? The officials doing what Mikkel Hardman wished they did better for him this last NFL season. Telling the ladies exactly where their feet should be and not to go over the line of scrimmage. And Penwood will opt for the punt. And that might be costly as going all the way down to about the nine yard line. Kylie Mann will call it a 50 yard punt return on the bounce. So while a punt wasn't a bad decision, the punt coverage left a bit to be desired and Kylie Mann took advantage. First and goal, just like that for Coatesville. Up 12, nothing here, looking to punch one more in before they hit the half. Woodward throws and brought down right at the one yard line. And allegedly, that is how our half ends. Well, all righty then. Close opportunity there for Coatesville. I thought they had more time personally, but looks like not. So that's a huge tackle to close half number one, and that's how it ends. 12 nothing your score here at Penwood here on the Rap Curry Athletic Complex. Josh Safford on the call here with SFBN. We'll step aside for five minutes and be right back with half number two.
All right, welcome back. Second half is ready to roll. It looks like Coatesville will start with the ball here and immediately brought back behind the line of scrimmage. So 24 minutes here for the rest of regulation. Dangerous throw from Alicia Woodward. She put her hands in her face after that one. She, she got away with one. Third down quickly. Woodward has it. It's DiMatteo to her left. She goes to her right, incomplete. Looked like the intended receiver was Cameron Morley. So quickly, fourth and long. Looks like a punt coming for the Raiders. Kylie Mann will punt. There's the snap. Mad sends this sky high. And it looks like we'll play it where it's spotted. Right around, we'll call it the 36. We'll actually make that the 26, considering the field size. So 12 nothing Penwood, a great stand to start half number two. We have just under 22 minutes to play. Tough spot here for the Patriots. Look at that 28 yard line is where it'll get spotted. Thomas holds, tough play, incomplete. No flag there, I thought someone was celebrating. Maybe there was a flag I missed, so I was waiting. No, no dice. Second down and eight. Intended receiver was Taylor Mims on the play, it looked like. Just three minutes into the second half here. Blitz coming, Thomas didn't get the pass up off the turf. Intended receiver was Janae Jackson Cofield. Third and eight. More passing this time, open receiver, no flag pulled. Finally, with a goal to go situation, Samaya Knight. Nice hook up for the first down and then some. And the Patriots have their first true scoring opportunity of the game. And it comes with 20 minutes to go here in the second half. Samaya Knight just outside of the five yard line. So a run is available here. Saw it happen on the other side with Coatesville. It's beneficial to be at that six. Penwood throwing nonetheless into traffic. Unable to come up with the ball. I think it was Taylor Mims. Also might have been Naziah Mateen. Can't exactly see the back of the jersey from here. Right idea. It looked like a nice throw from Amira Thomas. Kind of threaded in there, two defenders. But not able to hold on to that one. Second down, we'll do it again. Second and goal from the six. Goal. 
Thomas, draw play, but did not catch the Raiders off guard. There's Kayla Mesh again. Another tackle for loss. Number seven's been in the backfield all day. Third and goal now, and don't believe there's any field goals being taken. So a two down situation for the Patriots. Doesn't look like anyone in the backfield and my suspicions are confirmed. They're throwing, going deep. Oh, looked like an interception. Not able to hold on to the ball. No, actually looked like a touchdown and not able to hold on to the ball. Navy blue and black. Not, not the easiest to differentiate back there. My apologies. Fourth down and goal here. Nine yards to go to the end zone. Patriots need this one here if they want to mount a comeback. Early pass tonight. Her flag is pulled, but it's too late. A touchdown for the Patriots. They're on the board. So Maya Knight with a touchdown. It's Thomas tonight for a nine-yard pass. And the Patriots get on the board. That was a close call. And the official said she had gotten the ball past the pylon when her flag was pulled. Kind of a bang, bang play. It's now the point after. This can give Penwood a major advantage. Much easier said than done, of course. Keep it in the air. Thomas heaves one up. It's caught. Incomplete out the back of the end zone. That is a tough play. The back of the end zone starts where the painted area begins. And the official said, Ugh, unfortunately, out of the end zone. You heard the cheers. It looked like a great play. But not counting. It'll stay a 12-6 game. That could have given the Patriots a big advantage here. Neither team able to convert the point after. So three touchdowns and over three on the point after try. 12-6 your score as we tick around 16 minutes left to play here in regulation. Gotta love the athleticism you see today. Great opportunity here for the ladies to show off their skills. Great play call, but Penn would read it. Fake the screen one side. Try to get the defense all committing to the left. And pop it back the other way, but Penwood stayed home. Second down now here for Coatesville. Raiders looking for their first win of the season. Alicia Woodward still back there. And where's the spot of this one? They're gonna say past the 20, and that'll be a first down for Coatesville. Patience from the offense. Right at that 20 yard line, as you see denoted by that orange 20. Those are your first down markers. The mid one is right at the smack dab middle of the field on the 50 yard line. It's technically the 40 yard line. They're going that way. Oh, and a dropped interception for Penwood. Nice defense to read the eyes of the quarterback. But not enough stick them on the gloves today. Second down and 20. Tell you what, Alicia Woodward's got an arm. Got to get the timing a little more on point. Maybe a miscommunication, some trickery. Woodward's going to try to run, but not the smoothest on the snap and motion. It was a play. It was a handoff to Mesh, 
and then passed back over to Alicia Woodward. Woodward just ran out of running room. Play out went a little bit slower than I think Coatesville were hoping. Slow enough for Penwood to read it, and well, they were all over it. Third down and 19 now. Woodward and May snap goes over Woodward's head. And that'll be a dead ball. Now where does that get spotted? So it does, it gets spotted where that ball drops. So that's gonna be a 21, maybe a 22 yard to get to a first down. And I think Coatesville, excuse me, are going to opt for a punt. Big break here for Penwood. They can tie or even take the lead. That's a great punt. Are you kidding me? This one's going to bounce all the way down to their own 15. And nice coverage. It's going all the way down the field. Looks like Gabby Bookard. Or no, excuse me, that's Alessia D. Davide. D. David. So way to flip the field, if nothing else, if you're the Raiders. He's got a cannon. Nice spot all the way back at the 26, I'll call it. 26 of the Patriots. So not only does that pin them back on their own side of the field, it's not an easy first down here either. That's a first and 14. Hand off and both flags pulled, only a gain of two or three. Second down, it looks like. Second down, we'll call it 13. I got 11 and a half minutes to go here. But who knows? Thomas. Nice pitch and catch. Still going to be about eight yards short, it appears. Can't see exactly who that pass was to. It looks like once again, I was just gonna guess Jackson Cofield. Been saying her name quite a bit. Looks to be the number one receiver here for the Patriots. Third and seven. Thomas dumps it off, a check down, it'll only gain one, fourth and six. I gotta imagine the Patriots will go for it here, but I've been wrong many times before. Fatima Kamara comes out. Seen her run the ball before, but maybe coming on to punt. Ten minutes to go here, so plenty of time if you can make a stop. It doesn't have to be four down territory, but the way that Coatesville has been able to return the ball and being down six, I personally would go for it here, but no, it looks like a punt. If Kamara punts it away around the 40. Punts muffed. It'll be ruled down at the, we'll call it the 29. Nope, they'll call it the 30-yard line here. I know it looks like the 40 yard line on your screen. But the flag football field is 10 yards shorter on each side, so technically the 30 yard line here on the flag football rules. Midfield would be the 40. So it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 30, 20, 10, touchdown. So first and 10, nice field position here for the Raiders to start with. A little over nine minutes to play here in second half. Empty backfield for Alicia Woodward. Mesh in motion. She looks to Mesh. Mesh gets it. Nice reverse of direction, but it'll only gain a couple. Sticking with it that time was Ariel Noble. So 
So gain of three officially. Second and seven. Woodward seeing something she likes or something she doesn't like. Taking her mouthpiece out, looking like Peyton Manning. Surprised didn't hear any Omahas. Woodward pump fakes a couple times, goes deep. She's got her woman. Making a couple moves, it's Cameron Morley. And Morley has a long first down. What a toss, what a reception. Patience, one, two, three, Mac, maybe even four pump fakes from Alicia Woodward, who finds Morley. That'll set up a first and looks like four, looks like five. We'll call it first and five. Alicia Woodward trying to keep it going, going deep again. That's man, jump ball, intercepted. Coming back the other way, that's Samaya Knight. Knight, oh, that might have been a touchdown saving tackle from Bella Di Matteo. Samaya Knight having a fantastic game for the Patriots, keeping them in it. A touchdown and now an interception. Seven and a half to play, <laughs> plenty of time here for the Patriots. To mount a drive, tie the game, heck. Touchdown and a point after would give them the lead. So that field position, it looks like a first and 19. Not the best field position here for the Patriots. But you're happy to just have the ball without allowing a score from the Raiders. Got to imagine a lot of passing. Drag route, no flag. And taking it a couple yards shy of the gain, that's Taylor Mims. So Mims brought down right at the 36. It'll be second and four. Confidence mounting now for these Patriots. Smart decision making here from Amira Thomas, but this one handed off, and there she is again, Kayla Mesh, a wrecking ball. Add that to the tackle for lost tally. So a couple yard loss, third and six now. Six minutes to go here in regulation. Thomas going short over the middle again. Juke, but we got a flag. Big call up coming. It's two yards short of the first down marker. Who's the flag on? I'm wondering if this could be offensive. Indeed it is. I saw a stiff arm or something of the like. I think the penalty, no, nope, never mind. Penalty not declined. Clearly backed up five yards, but it's still a fourth down. So loss of downs and back it up five yards. Fourth and seven. And it's going to be a punt. So you risk not getting the ball back here if you punt, and maybe a change of heart. See a couple personnel swaps out here for the Patriots, but no, it looks like it will be a punt. Precious seconds ticking away. Penwood supporters don't seem to agree with the call. That one. will take a Penwood bounce. And maybe not the best call to pick it up right in front of the 50. So, I think the high IQ, the, the brilliant play would be to wait for that to go, to pick that up right at like the 39 yard line. 
So that would set you up for a first and one. Instead, ball was caught right on the 50-yard line. I think that's what the officials are discussing right now, is how to mark this. I think they're gonna mark it right on the 50, or technically the 40-yard line. And that'll set up a first and 20. So all in all, not the worst scenario there for the Patriots. Under four minutes to play, however. Still passing is Coatesville. There's Mache, not able to find her. Second and 20. 3.30 to play here, unofficially on the timer. Let's say, uh, call that one an educated guess over here. Second and 20. Woodward. Stepping up in the pocket. Going deep. Nobody home. Nice defense by Taylor Mims. She got up. Put that on the huddle to see the vertical. But it's just an incompletion in the stat sheet. Third and 20. Three minutes to go now. Huge play here if you're Coatesville. Got to imagine a punt. Unless they can pick up about 15 or more here. Still Woodward back there, but you got to watch out. It's Kylie Mann to her left. Mann, then a menace out there. A touchdown and an interception. And right on cue, they give it to Mann. Man, as her flag pulled after a modest gain of nine. And actually, correction, looks like just a gain of six. So we got our two minute warning here. Clock stops, and now we can all get on the same page. Man, you can't ask for a better close to the game here. Two minute warning. We'll see, big call up coming for Coatesville. They're gonna go for it. Pretty much the game at this point. If they can get it to the 20 yard line, it's a first down and they can try to run out the clock. If not, Penwood a real chance to come back. Woodward looking, firing over the middle, incomplete. <laughs> it looked like Harley Zolankowski, her intended receiver. Good toss, unable to haul it in. And Penwood will take over with a minute 51. So Penwood, first and 11. And we'll get a whistle. Penwood wants to talk it over before the drive begins. Admittedly, I'm not totally positive on how many timeouts each team gets per half. Two. Thank you, Sean Kelly. Two timeouts per half for each team. Not sure if that's the best spot to use your first of two timeouts here with under two minutes to go and the length of the field to go. However, like I said, under two minutes in completions, out of bounds, all that good stuff does stop the clock, so you can rush up and spike it. You can try to play to the outside and get out of bounds here to stop the clock, but I would always like to have at least every timeout I can get down the stretch. Touchdown will tie it, a touchdown to the point after will take the lead and potentially win it with this amount of time left. Back in action now, Thomas, plenty of time. Ooh, tough play, contested, very tightly covered. It's Kayla Mesh again. Second and 10, minute 47 to go.
Second and ten now. Thomas looking to go deep. She'll toss it out. Gets it behind the defense. Cutting upfield. Finally, flag brought down. That's Samaya Knight. All the way down, and now a goal to go situation for Penwood. Absolutely no hurry to get up to the line. Trying to see where they spot it. Looks like the 11-yard line, so I jumped the gun with goal to go. I'm going to move it back a couple yards, actually. It looks like the 12, maybe the 13-yard line. Still a first and goal situation, technically. A little under a minute and a half to go. Looking to tie are the Patriots. Blitz is coming. Dumped off. Nice check down. Flag taken down right at the six-yard line. It was Jackson Cofield. Unofficially a minute, 10 to go. Thomas looking back of the end zone, incomplete. Doesn't seem like the Patriots have adjusted. Looks like a lot of those routes were being ran into the painted area, which is out of bounds. So even had she held on to that ball, that would have been incomplete. We got a few girls down over there in the back of the end zone. Going full effort to get that last pass. So third and goal when we return. Still at the six or seven yard line. Might want to consider running the ball once to get it a bit closer. Having said that, though, seems like Penwood could use more space as it was Taylor Mims who was down as she makes her way off the field gingerly. It's a tough blow if Mims sits out this play. She's been one of three leading receivers here for Penwood between Janae Jackson, Cofield, and Samaya Knight, 12, 13, and 14 on the chart. Third and goal from the six. It's a screen play, and I think there were footsteps heard. Kayla Mish was looking to blow up that screen pass. Fourth and what might be the game. End zone or bust if you're Penwood. Got to imagine you're telling him, Ivor Thomas, don't throw the, throw the ball short of the end zone here. This ball better go six yards in the air. Fifty seconds to go. Could be the game. Thomas pump fakes, scanning the field. She goes deep, and nobody's home. A huge stop on fourth down for the Coatesville Raiders. Forty-four seconds to go. I'm not sure. The clock stoppage situation here. If Penwood, they only have one timeout, if that's enough to get the ball back here, if Coatesville keep it on the ground. Hand off to Man, she's stopped. 
back at the five yard line. Clock continues to tick, I believe. Not sure what the play clock situation is here. Got a snap. Trickery. And it's thrown back into the end zone. What's the call here? Do we have a safety? That's a safety. So hold your horses. This is not over. Just about the one thing that you could not afford to have happen just happened. This press conference, they're going to have to ask Coach why the trickery was drawn up there. <laughs> My goodness. You see something new. 16 seconds left. This is not over, ladies and gentlemen. Fans had made their way to the parking lot. They're now trying to get back in. So if you were trying to beat traffic, you feel foolish by now. Twelve to eight, a touchdown wins it. Unofficially 16 seconds to go. One timeout in the back pocket for the Patriots. Out of bounds and incompletions do stop the clock. Clock is going. Thomas looking to go outside. Good idea, but incomplete. Man, you got to wonder how many hook and ladders. All the laterals have Penwood been practicing. I don't know Amira Thomas's arm strength. I would be shocked if she could make it down to the goal line. Who knows, you might have the next Caleb Williams out there. Twelve seconds to go for Thomas. Waiting the snap. Clock's running now, going deep, jump ball, no one got it. Six seconds on my end. Maybe one last play, two if you play it quick, but I don't know if you can risk that. Might be time to go back to that, whatever your crazy play is you got in the back pocket. Not sure if there's really a playbook for this. Could be the final play. Thomas looking for anything over the middle. Incomplete. And I believe that is the game. Indeed it is, Coatesville. Oh man, oh man, it wasn't pretty. They almost tossed it away, but they're gonna get their first victory of the season, 12 to eight. Penwood tried to fire back, scoring eight unanswered points here in the second half. Coatesville though, they got the early lead, 12 to nothing, and they sat on it. They move now to one, two, and one on the season. Great game, player of the game today. Oh, it's tough. Oh, it's between Kayla Mace and Kylie Mann. And I think I'll have to tip my cap to Kylie Mann. It's not easy doing so. Mace was huge on the defensive end with one receiving touchdown, but Mann was a real X factor, a wild card running up and down on an interception, a punt return, and a touchdown run for Coatesville. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me here on SFBN as Coatesville wins it by a score of 12 to eight. Thank you, Sean Kelly for the producing. This is Josh Safran signing off and saying enjoy your week. Mm -hmm.